Good morning, beautiful people of the world. Good morning. It is Monday, another mad Monday. It is Monday, August 5th, 2024. Oh, I'm trying to get this out of my head. right but I keep hitting my head excuse me y'all trying to put this stick in my hair okay that'll work so yeah it is Monday I'm trying to get this situated here um, I'm on my way to work in my mama's car again. I know my mama is tired of me, child, because I'm tired of me. I'm tired of me. She tired of me. We tired. We just tired, 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 tired. Oh, they getting ready to tear the street up right here. Oh, so, um, I'm just, I'm fit to be tired. So I, I did not get any sleep last night. I was up to about one thirty this morning, almost close to two, with my car on my mind. And listen, I know that we are not supposed to, what's the word I'm looking for? I know that we are not supposed to give a lot of energy to material things, but I rely on my car. And that's just the truth. Um, I rely on my car. It's about the storm. Because it's the only thing that, only way that Christopher and I, you know, can get around. You know, um, and I need my car. You know, I need my car to get him to school, get him pick him up, take him here for me to go to work. You know, I, I mean, I could pay for an Uber every day, but that's so expensive. And I just don't have the money to pay for an Uber every day. And I know a lot of people do Uber. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, and I get it, because I have a girlfriend, Christopher and Auntie, who right now, her transmission or something went out in her car. And, um, you know, she she Ubers everywhere. And I have another girlfriend who used to do that, who never learned how to drive, or didn't want to learn how to drive, and she Ubers. So, you know, I get it. I get it. I get that you have to do what is best for you and your situation but I'm a person I like to drive I'm used to driving um, I just at this point I just don't know what else to do with that car so I was looking on YouTube and they were saying that it could be my and which my friend had told me this it could be my oxygen sensors I also found out that the ignition coils that he put in the car or that we put in the car or whatever they're the wrong coils. So for those of you all that have a to have Toyota, and if you happen to have a Toyota RAV4, or I believe any type of Toyota, you have to have certain ignition coils for Toyotas. You need the Denzos, D-E-N-Z-O, Denzo. Those are the coils that you need when you that for a tune-up. They're the long coils, the black coils that I showed you, not the coils that, well, I don't know what those, par, those are because I know what the spark plugs are. 
for the things to go down in your car, the, the, the black long thing, they're called, you need Denzo, D-E-N-Z-O. So, so know that if you take your car anywhere to get a, I'm getting ready to pass for my car is, I'm gonna look over there and see if my baby is over there. Um, if you take your car to any place other than Toyota to, to get a, um, uh, <coughs> if you take your car any place to get a tuna other than Toyota, a replica, replica Toyota place, know that you need Denzo ignition coils okay so that's what I needed so the guy from Midas did tell me that now I'm gonna say this um I know a lot of places don't like Midas I have never ever ever had an issue with Midas I've gone to this Midas right here on 75th and Stony, and this one further down on 72nd and Stony, where I used to live these guys have always did me right all the time and so you know i can't talk about them because they've always treated me good honest to god and i don't want a bad mouth nobody you know i, I just don't because like i said if it wasn't for them i don't know what i would do that's this is where my car is So, you know, I have to I have to give I have to give people credit and praise when they have looked out for me. And both of these men are the managers um, at um, Midas. And they've done me right. They really, really have did me right. You know. So I thank God that uh, Bob, the guy that's on 75th and Stony, and now this guy named Jesse. Um, oh, this street is rough. That they have really looked out for me. So yesterday, you know, I put the video up about the car. So somebody got on here and said, buy a new car. Listen here. If y'all not going to help, when I share things with you all, I'm sharing things with you all because they have, it's about my life. And I'm also sharing things with you because a lot of you all do have the same type of car that I have. Or you drive a Toyota, or you know somebody who drives a Toyota, or your kids might have a Toyota, whatever. I'm just sharing. I don't need you to tell me to go and buy a new car. Believe me, if I want to buy a new car, I will. But if you're not going to help me pay that car note, please shut the fuck up. Seriously, if you're not going to sell me some money or cash at me some money every month for me to buy me a new car, really and, and truly, just shut the fuck up. If you're not going to help me pay that car insurance and that this car note, a car note, just shut the fuck up. I'm serious. And it pissed me off when this person wrote that because obviously you ain't been looking at the videos to know what I've been going through. Now, I'm not saying that you didn't mean well. You probably did. But don't tell me to go buy a new car because you don't know my, my financial situation. You don't know what I pay in my house. You don't know how much my mortgage is. You don't know how much my bills are, okay? So if I when I get ready to go buy me a new car, y'all will know about it because you know I'm going to tell you about it because I get on here and I share it with you. But if you're not offering to pay, pay if, if you're not offering to, uh, to help me pay a car note, and you're not offering to send me money every month to help me pay my house note. You're not paying that $2,100. Shut the fuck up. And I mean that. Don't tell me to go buy a new car. Because, you know, I've bought new cars. I've, I've never bought a used car. This car is the longest car that I have had. That I have kept this long. Not this car I'm driving, but the one that is in the shop. This is my mama's car. This is a Toyota RAV4 too, but this is a 2024. This is a brand new car. She just got this car in February. You know, my mama don't have no house, no. You know, she don't have no house, no. Um, 
And, you know, even though she's on a fixed income, she does well. She buys what she wants to buy. She pay her bills. She don't come to me or my sister talking about I can't pay my bills, blah, blah, blah. None of that. You know, my mama always makes sure she take care of herself. And my mama is 80 years old. So I've learned from the best of the best. My daddy was the same way. I had two middle class parents. I didn't grow up poor. So every car I've ever owned, I bought off the floor of a dealership. So if I wanna go buy a car, I will. So at that particular moment, I didn't need you to say that to me because I was already depressed. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling like the world is sitting on top of my shoulders right now. And I don't know which way to go, you know. Um, I'm going to buy another car eventually. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to buy another car because this car, my car is 11 years old. I wanted to get at least five or six, if not 10 more years at that car. You know, I wanted to enjoy having a car note. And because of the fact that I have a house note, that's not in my budget to buy a house. I make damn good money, but again, it's just me. I don't receive child support. I don't receive nothing. It's my salary, my one income, paying everything. And so I wanted to enjoy uh, not having a car note for a couple of years. I wanted to enjoy not having a car note for a couple of years, and I wanted to... Um, that's why I bought the house because my car was finally paid off. I said, okay, I won't have a car note. I can just focus on uh, paying, um, you know, paying my house note and having, enjoying having, you know, paying, you know, having a house and paying the bills. You know, I have gas, I have cable, I have uh, light. I have um, the, um, which I ain't paid. I don't know how much it is. Um, I have uh, my security system. I have to pay that bill. I have groceries I have to buy to feed this kid. Plus paying for his clothes. And, um, you know, all of the things that come with, you know, a teenager. You know, and I never get on Facebook or YouTube or TikTok or any other place and ask MF to sponsor me. There's a lot of you guys that send me gifts, and I appreciate it. If you send $25, $25 is $25. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm grateful for $25. I'm grateful for $30. I'm grateful for $40. I'm grateful for it all. But I don't think I got on here and asked nobody for their opinion on whether or not I should buy a new car or not. Because it's not that easy. You know, it's not that easy to just go buy a new car. You know, and I really, if I do buy a new car, I want to be able to put some money down. Have you all went and looked at the sticker prices on cars lately? I ain't trying to tell my business. But my mama is paying a hefty little note on this little this car and this is I love this car I love this car but the car that I want the car that I want I cannot afford and until I can get what I want I mean if I had to go buy a car like this a RAV4 like this, if I had to, I would. You know, I would. But, it just don't, and this is another thing too. Me and my mama is always together. It just don't make sense for me to go buy a car and, a, a, a car and get an $800 car note and one car is paid off. And she don't even hardly drive this car. My mama be in the house 80% of the time. This car beat when you come out of the lab. 
My mom would be in the house 80% of the time. My mom would want to drive her car to the doctor. She drive her car to the grocery store. She go right around the corner from her house to the grocery store. She right by the grocery store. She drive her car to go meet her friends, her retired girlfriends for lunch. You know, my mama, my mama is not a person who in her car all the time and she gonna drive. She not gonna, she, that's not my mama, you know. Cause that's why we was trying to talk her out of getting the car. Now I'm glad that, that she do have a car because if she didn't, I would have to rent a car, you know, or I would have to be Ubering or something, you know. Okay, what are you doing right here? So I thank God that she did get a car because it's helping me out. But I can't pay this car, no. I mean, I would if I could, if I had to. But I'm looking at like, damn. I, I would be so broke. I'm already broke. But I would be really broke. Because one check, I pay my mortgage. That takes almost all my check. Okay, then the other check, I pay the next check. So this is how I do it. On the 7th, I pay the house, the mortgage. The next check on the 22nd, I pay my utilities. My light, my gas my water bill, my cable, um, you know, all them bills. I go grocery shopping. So I got it set up the way that I do my bills, that on one check what I take out. And I still like to shop, and Chris still needs some, you know. Like right now, Christopher need uh, uniform shirts. This is a bad time for me to still be paying for repairs on the car. And I got to pay for his uniform short shirts. His uniform shirts, he needs five of them. Every time they go to a new grade, it's a different goddamn shirt. So he'll be a junior, and I got to make sure I get these shirts by before August 23rd. That's when he starts school. So that's in like two or three more weeks. And I'm going to need my mama to go get the shirts because I don't know how I'm going to get them. But his shirts, I think his shirts cost like, they like 20 or 25 a piece. So if he needs five, do the math. That's a hundred dollars right there. So, you know, again, ain't nobody helping me. And I can't even go to my mom and ask my mom to help me buy the uniform shirts or his pants because um, <clears throat> uh, she just bought him because he broke the TV <coughs> in her bed in her upstairs bedroom, the second bedroom. That's his bedroom, and he's over there. He broke it accidentally. He fell on the bed. And the bed went up in the air. He's got one of those old school roller raid beds. And it hit the TV and it cracked the TV. So she just, because she told me I was going to have to buy the TV. And I was looking at her like, uh, he ain't going to have the TV. But anyway, she bought him a TV. And he lost one of his earrings in his ear, stud earrings. She bought that. So I'm going to go to her and say, Mama, can you buy his uniform shirts? You know what I'm saying? I can't do that. So now, I gotta pay the mortgage. I gotta get his uniform shirts. I gotta buy him some. I gotta buy him some black pants for school. Thank God, you know, Angel at Metal Shrub um, sent him a gift for the housewarming party, so I was able to get him the shoes that he needed for school. And now he comes to me and tells me there's another pair of shoes that he liked, and he's wondering if I could get him these shoes, and they cost. I told him, I said, you know what? You better wear what you have. And we'll get them another time. Because I ain't got it. His father don't give him nothing. Nothing. This lying bastard came here in June and lied and said that um, that's that witch I work with said that um, 
that when he met up with him, he wanted to give him uh, a gift. Give him some money. Well, that motherfucker left and then leave him shit. <coughs> <coughs> Which I knew was a goddamn lie from the motherfucking get-go. Um, I said I was going to stop cursing. He didn't leave nothing. Not that we begging. It's hand sanitizer. Not that we begging. Or none of that. Or looking for it. Because I made it. 16 years. I made it. I made it. Through it all. I have made it. So. You know. But don't lie. And say you had some money for him. And because you didn't see him, because you fucked up, you took, you, you, you didn't even leave the money. You know, just a bunch of bullshit. And that's why I'm so still pissed, even with his mama. I'm still pissed about all of it. You know, you knew goddamn well you didn't have no fucking money for him. Fat fucking ass loser. He don't give a shit about this boy. He don't care if he eat. He don't care if he will, he don't care if he need just basic necessities, underwear. He don't give a fuck. As long as his fat ass got what he need. You know, he don't give Christopher shit. Nothing. Nothing. Why are you all the way out here? about to run the light. He gives him nothing. And when I tell you he don't get his boy nothing, he don't get his boy nothing. And y'all got the nerve to be mad at me? <laughs> okay. Keep being mad. Kiss my ass. No, it, it just pisses me off. Everybody want to holler, my son, my son, my son. But you don't do shit for him. Ain't never did nothing for him. Never. And this is what pisses me off about men. When a woman is with a man, and that man is a poor, piss-ass father. Y'all want to blame the woman for y'all, for a man being a poor, piss-ass father. Okay, why are you in the way? Come on right now. Oh. <laughs> you want to blame the woman? Oh, y'all, y'all really choose these sorry ass motherfuckers? No, we don't choose you all. How about you all not be sorry ass motherfuckers? How about that part? It's always our fault that y'all fuck ups. Take no responsibility for you just being a motherfucking deadbeat ass fucking ass father. Nobody wants to take responsibility for that. Knowing you ain't shit. Why are you making me dizzy now? Yes, he is. You know what, CC? Uh -huh. I was, uh, I don't mean to bother you. No, uh, that's listening. okay. This morning I was listening to, uh, and it made me feel good. It was confirmation of what you said last week. I was listening to a woman 
and she was explaining, it was on Facebook or something, she was explaining uh, how don't you ever let a man break down to you or shut down it and then you uh, like mark him or something yeah, like that. You was yeah, against him, him like yeah. that. Yeah. And she said you lost him right there. Yep, and absolutely. He would never break down. I mean, he would never open up to you like that again. Exactly. And, and, and that's true. That's very true. That's so true. So that's very said true. That, I felt so bad about doing it for you. I'm like, man. You know what I mean? You know, you but know, we all are, we human beings. But I'm just explaining to you. I understand. Once I, I, once I heard that, the first thing popped. And you ain't got no business popping in my mind over here. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? For the record, since we want to talk about it. But, uh, <laughs> but the first thing that came to my mind is, is, is that what came to my mind. Yeah, so yeah. When, when I, when See, I so you got confirmation from what I told you. you See that? Just now. I know. Well, I'm just saying, once again, you ain't got no business <laughs> in my, on, on the weekend. Let me, give me the weekend, all right? You too much drama in the weekday, okay? Give me my weekend, all right? That's because you love me. Ain't, no, ain't like, a, like a fat kid, little kid. <laughs> no. okay. What we eating for lunch today? I don't know, you tell me. Okay, I'm going to let yeah, you I know. know. I, first of all, I don't know, because I don't know. Might have uh, right. I, I don't know if I'm going to be here either. Too. I know, exactly. <laughs> well, you know how they do around here. Okay, sweetie. All right, you know they always worry about what other motherfuckers do. It's all I know. It's all <laughs> oh, he a sweetheart. Um, so again, you know, um, he ain't do shit. He ain't do shit for Christopher, you know, and I'm telling you all, I'm just not the type of person. I ain't going to never, ever, ever get on here and ask y'all for a dime. I see people do that all the time, you know, uh, put their cash app up. My cash app, cash app <coughs> ain't even on YouTube. I just don't do that. I don't believe that. I feel if you watch me, if you support me thank you you know i that's that's good enough for me but i'm human i struggle like everybody else do you know but y'all y'all some of these men want to blame the women for men not being shit i didn't shit you out you ain't i didn't raise you i didn't make you who you are and people don't come with goddamn warning labels telling you that the motherfucker is fucked up don't none of that shit we don't get that we don't. We as women don't know what we get, and I'm gonna tell you, y'all gonna give an account. Every man that has dogged a woman, dragged a woman, left a woman while she was 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 pregnant, and didn't do right by her when she was pregnant, didn't do right by her helping her take care of that child. Y'all gonna answer in a different type of way because you all were to lead us, you all were to provide for us, and y'all ain't did that. And I'm talking to y'all that don't do shit for your children. I'm talking about y'all that lie. I'm talking about y'all that give a fist bump and adapt to your boy, knowing he ain't shit, but you hang out with him. You're going to answer in a whole different way because he made you the head. He didn't make you the tail. He made you the lead. <coughs> yes. <coughs> I'm still coughing. <coughs> I'm telling you. So ask it in a different type of way. And ladies, if you got a man who is a good man, who is a good provider, and just because you all are not in a relationship no more, you are withholding your children or using your children as a pawn, you're going to ask it too. Because a child don't deserve that. A child deserves to have both... <coughs> <clears throat> both of his parents in his life or her life or their life you should never ever children don't come they don't come knocking tapping on your coochie <clears throat> tapping on his dick talking about let me out or let me in your coochie cause I wanna be born they don't come tapping and knocking you laid you fucked you had a you made a baby take care of it that go for you and that go for him and go for both of y'all and that's why i have said time and time again on this platform men wrap your dicks up stop listening to women talking about they own birth control wrap your dick up because can't a motherfucker strap you if you got your dick wrapped up women stop gapping your legs open to these motherfuckers that you know ain't shit if you want to just fuck them make sure you protect it because once a baby come, it's over. It's a wrap. 
You gonna find out what a real what real people are when the re, when responsibility come with y'all playing with each other. You wanna do grown grown? It's <laughs> now you gotta do grown grown. Think about who you sleeping with. That's for a man and a woman. And if you pat if you if you between the age of 15 and <clears throat> 50. And most of y'all start having sex when y'all 13, 14, 15 years old. Wrap your shit up. Women, protect yourselves. Okay? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I didn't have a baby until I was 38 years old. And I was grown. Living on my own. Working. Taking care of myself. But this shit is not easy. So, you know... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What time is it? Six thirty-eight. You know, <laughs> life will teach you some things. Life will teach you some things, and we all have made mistakes. We all have. We human beings. Ain't none of us perfect. We all have made mistakes. All of us. Every last one of us that made a mistake. <laughs> But be careful who you lay him with. Oh, oh, he gonna hold me down. Shit. Oh, she would never trap me. Oh, she would never tell me she on birth control and not be on birth control. Okay, believe that bullshit if you want to. And if you're watching me and you're a young person, I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I tell my own. Sex is all good and fine. It feel real good. It's all yummy, yummy. Until, I'm just saying, I tell my son all the time, go stick your pickle in that if you want to. You don't know what you going to get. You don't know if you're going to get herpes. You don't know if you're going to get gonorrhea. You don't know if you're going to get a pregnant. You don't know. You better protect your damn self. Because every motherfucker out here is out for their damn self. People love you today. They'll hate you the same day. Love you at 10 o'clock. 1030 can't stand your motherfucking ass. Real talk. Anyway, I'm getting ready to go. Don't make no stupid mistakes that you that you will regret for the rest of your life. Be careful how you move. Sex is beautiful. It's wonderful. It feels great. I love sex. But you better be careful who you laying down with. Cause that's a lifetime commitment with a motherfucker that you ain't gonna that you gonna end up hating. Right here. Okay? He ain't even in my life. I don't even have to talk to this fat fuck. But I got a part of him that I live with every day. And I don't even associate Christopher with him. Because Christopher comes from me. <coughs> <coughs> so I can never hate Chris. I could never hate Christopher because of him. I'm never going to be that mother. Oh, you just like your daddy. You ain't shit. You just like him. You look just like him. Bitch, you laid with him. You had a baby with him. You didn't say, what are you thinking about that when y'all was fucking? So how dare you say that to a child? Whatever he do, whatever he look like or he act like, you laid with that seed. And you got to take responsibility for that. And all you women mad because a man didn't want to marry you. I understand you upset. I understand you hurt. I understand how you feel. I understand how you feel like why he didn't, you know, choose me. Why he went out with somebody else. Listen here. You don't even know. You might have been dodging a damn bullet. What everything that look good and seem like it's good is not always good. You can go in the store and right now and buy a package, package of hamburger meat and pay $28 for some ground beef and think, oh, it's $28. This some good meat. And when you get home and you unwrap that meat, that meat is spoiled and you, you'll be mad than a muffler. I paid $28 for this meat. You know, hamburger meat has high. And it's spoiled. You will hurry up and take that shit back to the store and go the fuck off and, and have your receipt and be like, give me my money back. <clears throat> so, just because, 
just because a motherfucker had moved on to somebody else and you thinking that, you know, because he didn't want me, consider yourself fortunate and blessed because you don't know what's up the road or what she going to have to deal with with him. You don't want me, motherfucker, goodbye. Get to motherfucking Stephanie because I've said it on this platform and I'll say it again. I'm amazing. I'm wonderful. I'm all that. I'm not just all that in a bag of chips. I'm all that and all 12 uh, uh, variety pack of chips. And that's how you got to look at yourself. Don't sell yourself short because he don't want you or because she don't want you. Look in the mirror every day and say, I'm wonderful. I'm amazing. I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I'm all that. Who wouldn't want to be around me? Who wouldn't want to be me? Your loss. Not mine. Your loss. Because I'm great. I know what I did. And I know what I give. You missing out on a good damn thing. Not me. <laughs> I'll never put another motherfucker on a pedestal and make them think that they all that. If anything, I'll tear you down and let you know you ain't shit. Come on here, somebody. Don't sell yourself short for somebody else. Don't sell yourself short. We all have been through that. When somebody had left us for somebody else, that shit hurt like hell. But at the end of the day, when the day ends, and it may not be that day, it may be a day six years from now, 12 years from now, 15 years from now, you gonna know why God spared you not being with that person. I promise you. Can't see it now. Because you're blinded by love and you're hurt. But I promise you, God going to show you why he left you for somebody else. And why it wasn't him who decided to leave. That it was God that took him away from you. Because he had something better and greater for you. And he won it. Or she won it. But don't play these games with these kids. Don't play these games with these babies. Because like I said, they don't come knocking on our dicks and our coochies asking to be here. So you make a baby, take care of it. Love that child. That child deserves to have a beautiful childhood. You fucked up, go get some help. Because now you got a baby coming. <coughs> don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't be mad at me because I decided to get the fuck out of the relationship because you were abusive and I didn't want my child in that bullshit. Don't be mad at me. Look at your damn self and take some responsibility for why you fucked up and why I got the fuck on. Because I'm not, no motherfucker's gonna beat on me. I'm too beautiful. I'm too jazzy. I'm too classy to be walking around with a black eye, with a busted lip, with a busted nose. For who? Not for some dick. <laughs> for who? I don't love no motherfucker that much. I promise you I don't. Only person I love that much is Jesus. And I know Jesus ain't gonna never harm me. I'm gonna let a human being harm me because, because I'm pregnant by you? Bitch, if you don't get on somewhere. She here, not me. <laughs> Mm -mm. <coughs> Let me tell you something. I gotta get some more hand sanitizer. Let me tell you something. <coughs> my mama, I know what my mama gonna say. I hope you sprayed my car with some lights on. I don't think I'm contagious no more. I think this is just like me talking and I get this tickled in my throat. But let me tell you something. <coughs> My face is too beautiful. <laughs> I may not be a I may not be a Haley Berry. I not may not be a Lena Horn. I may not be the beautiful, most beautiful woman in the world. But baby, when I look at Sherelle Cotton, <laughs> when I look at Sherelle Cotton in the mirror every morning without no makeup, I see beauty in me. And my face is not made to be no motherfucking punching bag. God made my face and made me like this for a reason. 
and my nose should not be over here and my eyes should not be swelled up because you want to control me and you think you can fuck me up and hit me in my goddamn face. No, no. God didn't make me this beautiful for that. You may not think I'm beautiful and that's all right. But I do. I do. I do. And that's how you got to think about yourself. You look in the mirror, I don't care what you got going on. I don't care if you got one eyebrow up here and one down here. I don't care if your lip is turned this way and it's down here up under your goddamn chin. I don't give a fuck. But when you look at yourself, you better see I am beautiful. And I deserve to be treated a certain type of way. And my face ain't made for that. It ain't made for that. I don't care if your face is already fucked up. Men, don't let women beat on you, hit on you. You ain't make, you ain't God didn't make us for that. You want to go hit something, get you a punching bag, motherfucker. I ain't it. And you mad because I left you? You mad? Get the fuck off. You going to stay mad. Stay mad for the rest of your goddamn life. I don't care. You're not going to abuse me mentally, verbally, physically. You're not. Because you didn't make me and you didn't create me. And you ain't got no goddamn right to put your hands on me. And that's why he mad. He been mad 17 years since I left him. Because he wanted to pound on me. Not here. No, no. He didn't think I could make it. I made it. Been hard. But with God on my side, I made it. And to the person who said that I don't never show my t-shirts because they love t-shirts. This is what this t-shirt say. <coughs> <clears throat> it say God is my provider I shall not worry with the lady that shirt I had on Friday said my condolences to those that have lost me so when I wear a shirt I'll let you all know what, what they say I got this shirt from Timu but I wear I have a lot of t-shirts with a lot of sayings on them and it's not that I don't want to share sometimes I forget that I have them on and I be on here recording and people be like, this one particular lady's like, I love your t-shirts. What do your t-shirts say? Would you share what your t-shirts say? So I'll start sharing what they say. But you saw that, right? God, read it again. Read it again. God is my provider. I shall not worry. And you know what? This goes to anything that's going on in your life. Your car, your house, your kids, your husband, your man, the cat, the dog, the flea, the ant. God is your provider. And when you know who God is and you know how he provides, you're not going to let nobody keep mistreating you. Just so you can have, say you got somebody. We all want somebody. We ain't meant to live this life alone. We ain't meant to be alone. Everybody want a relationship. Most of us do. Or have had one at some point in time. But I'll be by myself. Until I find a man. Or till a man comes and treats me like I want to be treated. Because I'm not difficult to, to, to love. But I require a certain way that you treat me. And if you can't fit into my requirements. You don't need to be with me. Hey, how you doing? How your mama in now? Oh no, boo boo. Don't call me. Don't text me. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I just say hi to you. Keep it moving. Anyway, y'all, have a great Monday. Let me go on and punch into this good old government job I got. Well, it ain't a government job, but, you know. Let me go on and punch in so I don't be late. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Woo! We already in the month of August. Tomorrow, it will be the 6th. <sighs> These months are moving. Before we know it, y'all, we'll be saying Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <clears throat> Come on here, somebody. But I'm grateful for every day that God allows me to see. Hot, cold, rain, sun, no sun. I'm just grateful and thankful that I got my health and my strength, that I'm in my right mind of most of the days, and that he loves me. And that he provides. Have a good day. Because you deserve it. You know why? Because you're amazing. That's why. And you're awesome. And you're gorgeous. 
Bye.